have to meet a certain criteria. It's called DMR Tier 2. <laughs> you know, what Tier 1 is, is Tier 1 is basically digital FRS radios, a little family radio service, a little uh, blister pack radio. Tier 2, so you can have two totally independent conversations on the same repeater at the same time. Now, what's that do for us? Well, number one, it gives a lot of people a lot more chances to talk and not inter have to wait one long. There are some caveats about that. The second thing is, is in the public service or in the net event type thing. You can have, on the same repeater, you can have your general net on time slot one, and all emergency traffic can be dropped on time slot two, and it always gets through irregardless. And they will not interfere with each other. As you can tell, there are a lot of DMR radio manufacturers. This is just a few of them. Now, Connect Systems is out of California. This is the Chinese. Of course, we all know Motorola. Vertex is Yaesu. They also, in their commercial line, carry DMR. Hytera is another big Chinese manufacturer. RCA has done it. Curison, Chinese. Tate is Australian, correct? New Zealand. New Zealand. And I knew it was South Pacific somewhere. Kenwood's getting into it in their commercial line. Kydera is another Chinese. This is Terra is imported by PowerWorks um, out of Europe. And then there's the newcomer on the market, Anytone. And the Anytone looks to be the forerunner amateur radio wise. The Anytone radios walk on water, folks. It is the radio to get now for 190, 170 bucks. It will do everything you want analog and digital, but we'll get into that later. DMR Basics. DMR is basically at the brains of it, is the same as D Star Infusion. Same chip, same programming codec. It's just how they implement it, it's different. A standard FM repeater wideband channel is plus or minus 12 and a half kilohertz. That's what they allotted, allotted uh, bandwidth is by the FCC. DMR channel uses half of that. So it's, it's frequency spectrum, spectral conservative, which is what everybody wants to do now. It's narrow banding in the public service world. DMR allows for two time slot activity, which allows for two simultaneous talk groups and two conversations. This is one conversation, this is the other. When you key a DMR radio on DMR, it sends it 30 millisecond digital data burst, and it talks back and forth to the repeater. You will know instantly when you're in the repeater or not. Since it pulses, and it's not a continual transmitter, your batteries last longer, up to 40% longer. I can go two to three days on my Anytone without changing batteries or charging it. And there's a lot of people in this room that tell you, I talk a lot. Okay? <laughs> so that's a plus right there in my book. DMR also has its advantage in weak signal. How many of you are tired of hearing somebody right above the noise on an analog repeater? Makes your ears kind of bleed, doesn't it? Guess what? You don't get that on DMR. You're either in or you're out. There is no maybe. I have stood there and watched on the dashboard, which uh, control operators and anybody can actually pull it up and see how strong somebody is into a repeater. On our repeater sites, a noise floor is measured in DBM. We're sitting, majority of our meter repeater sites, except for the one at the, near the airport, is about a minus 128 DBM. I have watched guys use the repeater at 4 dBm above that, minus 124 dBm, and it sounds like they're standing right next to the repeater. You cannot tell that they're noisy into the repeater because the digital processing algorithm is cleaning them up and spitting it out to us. If it can't clean it up, it tells a guy, it gives them a blank tone, it says, hey, you need to move or you need to try again. That's the nice thing about DMR. It's constantly checking your signal every 30 milliseconds into the repeater. So you're either in or you're out. That's all there is to it. 
<coughs> now, when you transmit a repeater, your signal looks like this. This is two users, two individual users. One's on time slot one, one's on time slot two. Notice the offset. Time slot two is when time slot one is not transmitting. The thing about the repeater, though, is when it comes up and sees any activity, it stays there on both time slots. It's just a digital word tells which time slot for the user radio to pass the traffic to. So the repeater is basically a brainless little box. And it's going to do what you put in. It's going to spit out, but it's going to just spit it out appropriately in that higher power. So this is basically, this is how your signal is transmitted out of your walkie-talkie when you're talking on DMR. And each one of these boxes, these plateaus, is 30 milliseconds. Hence, using the, the lower battery life, longer battery life. And if you try to measure it with a standard watt meter, you will only see half power because it's constantly. Picture trying to pit us to watch a sideband signal on a normal bird. Do you get full power? You get about half. Same thing with DMR. DMR is based on commercial frequency or commercial standards and commercial radios. This ain't your dad's ham radio, folks. DMR is a total different world. We're starting to lean towards the amateur world, especially with the Anytone. On an analog channel, two main components, transmit and receive frequency and your PL code. That's a given, correct? Guess what? DMR expands it. You got transmit and receive frequency. Color code. Color code is like PL, except in the, D, in the DMR world. There are 17 available color codes. Now, Everybody but Missouri doesn't care. And 99% of the repeaters across the United States are on color code one. Somebody in Missouri goes, we want to be different. I don't know why you guys do that. I'm from Kansas, I'm from the dot, so I'm going to be making some Missouri jokes tonight, okay? Um, they decided to break it up to regional. Up towards St. Joseph, it's color code 7. Down here, it's color code 4. Further south, it's color code 5. On the east side of the state, you get the lower color codes. So Missouri has got it broken up. When you coordinate a repeater, they give you a color code you have to follow. Now, not only do you have a color code, or CTCS and DMR world, and transmit receive frequency, you have a contact. It's like, excuse me, it's a phone book. I can program in the transmit and receive frequency and the color code, but if I don't put in a transmit contact, nobody hears me. You have to assign where that data is going. It's like dialing up a web page. You can get on the internet, going to Google is going to take you to Google and nowhere else. Picture doing the same thing without a contact on DMR. A big caveat that you have to do, if you're going to play on DMR, you have to register for a DMR mark number. It puts you in the phone book. Also tells the networks that you're a valid and registered amateur radio operator. Does that preclude you from making your own identifier according to the FCC rules? No. You still have to say your call sign. Sorry folks, we're not in the 22nd century, we're in the 21st. Okay. And what's the DMR mark number cost? Nine. You go in and register, 24 hours to 48 hours later, you have a DMR mark number, you're set for life. How many DMR mark numbers do you need? One. They just turned down a guy on the East Coast who put in a request for 13 DMR mark numbers. Why? Must have a lot of radios likes to talk to himself. We'll talk more about the talking to yourself thing as I get into the talk groups here. But talk groups are mandatory. You have to tell the radio and the other users where you want to talk to. Talk groups reside in a digital contact list. They're group calls. In that list, there's two types of calls. Group calls, which is so everybody can hear, and there's private calls. Now, the backyard repeater group allows private calls to a minimum. We don't like to do it. We like to have everybody out in the open. 
A private call is like myself to Rob, W5GCT. I still use a time slot on the repeater. Okay, and while we're talking, that time slot is tied up. So if somebody wants to come in and use one of the group calls, they have to wait in line. So that's why we try to minimize private calls. Because we want to make it so that everybody can share. <coughs> and then we go group contacts are needed for talk groups. Group contacts are assigned by the DMR Mark or Brandmeister. There's two main networks in the United States, actually worldwide. And I'll get into those in a minute. DMR Mark and Brandmeister. Brandmeister goes by BM. And I've covered the private contacts. And then there's two types of activity on repeaters. There are your full time, where if anybody in the world keys up on that talk group, it's going to light off locally. Backyard repeater group, talk group 31201 on Brandmeister is like that. Right now, if I was to key up on 31201, we would light up 28 repeaters across Kansas and Missouri. That's how much it has exploded in the last two and a half years, almost three years now, since we started. So full-time talk groups, which we try to keep at a minimum on our systems, the only one we've really got dedicated to a time slot is BYRG. That's the one where everybody's hanging out on. That's where 99.9% .9 of our traffic is. Mr. Cook is here. Nice to see you, Eric. Um, and Eric can tell you that BYRG, as Ken, Ron, and Lee, and everybody else, BYRG and, and Rod, BYRG at times can, has gone almost 24 hours a day, which is local activity. I mean, we've got one hell of a user's base, and we're thankful for every one of them. User activated, or the, there's a lot. Brandmeister itself has over 900 talk rooms available to every one of us. I mean, we're got, and I'm an assistant administrator for Brandmeister. You would not believe some of the requests for talk rooms that we've got. I mean, I've actually seen requests for outer space talk groups. Okay, I'm just waiting for the the request for the Quaker Oats morning gas group talk group. It's just a matter of time. I mean, it's really gone. There are over 900 talk groups that are growing daily. I get every one of the emails because I'm one of the assistant administrators, and some of the requests, I'm like, really? Seriously? Come on, folks, you're killing me. Anyway, um, every one of the talk groups is available. I'll, I'll, other than what we've deemed as static, they're what we call user activated. What's that mean? User activated means they're sitting there. They're asleep until you key up and you wake it up and then you have your conversation and then after 10 minutes after you're done, it goes back to sleep and it frees up the time slot for another user to come in and use their use the time slot. DMR Mark, it's one of the things that uh, I mentioned. That's the precursor, it was the original network in the United States and around the world. Digital Mobile Radio, Motorola Amateur Radio Club. Now, hearing that, what would you guys intend that they needed to have their equipment be? Motorola. You had to run their equipment, you had to run a certain version of firmware, and you had to do it their way. Now, Motorola and DMR Mark do operate with something that's called a C-bridge for the network. Now, the reason the Sea Bridge is very close to Kansas City's heart is because of Mr. Ron and Mr. Tim at BridgeCom. They are one of the largest Sea Bridge sellers in the United States. Them in Rayfield, I think it is. Okay? What that does, the Sea Bridge, is it takes all these repeaters and it networks together through the internet and it allows you to have certain talk rooms on time slots. One man has the key to that castle. Each system operator goes off and contacts a Seabridge administrator and says, I want these talk groups on these time slots, and that's it. What you see is what you get. So on a DMR mark repeater, you can have 20 talk groups, or you can have two. And you can't change it as a user. 
you're stuck. Okay? Well, that's good. It existed for years until guys in Europe started putting Hyteras out there and homebrew repeaters. And they said, look, we've got to come up with something else. So Brandmeister appeared. Brandmeister was two years old, November of this last year. They said, we don't care what you got, hotspot, homebrew repeater, Motorola, Hytera, Joe's taco sauce repeater, we don't care if it'll talk to our network, we'll let you plug in and we'll connect you. And people have been jumping over to Brandmeister in droves. The entire state of Oklahoma switched from DMR Mark to Brandmeister in about two weeks once they caught wind of it. The entire state of Iowa is Brandmeister. 99% of the repeaters in Missouri are Brandmeister. There's a migration west into Kansas on Brandmeister. Brandmeister gives every repeater and every user the activity and the possibility to use all 900 plus talk groups. The users decide if they want to talk on that talk group. But here's a caveat. The sysops, me and Lee and Eric, decide what time slot you can use that on. Now, since 99% of our traffic is on Backyard Repeater Group 31201 talk group, we have dedicated only that talk group for time slot two. It's a gentleman's agreement. And trust me, I watch to make sure the gentlemen play nicely. I have the dashboard up at work and at home. And I can tell when somebody is using a talk group on time slot two other than backyard repeater group. And it usually is an email or a phone call or something like that saying, please don't do that. We've got to have backyard repeater group available so when somebody's driving down a road, and picks up the handheld or picks up the mobile mic and keys on backyard repeater group on any of our repeaters, it's available for their use. So we only put backyard repeater group on that time slot so that it's available. Time slot one gets everything else. I tell everybody else, go to time slot one, you guys battle it out. I don't want to hear about it. Okay? Because if somebody uses Kansas statewide and somebody comes and wants to use Kansas Missouri statewide, then one of them's going to have to wait. That's just the caveat that you have on DMR right now. BMR, Grandmeister has given the sysops full control of their repeater. Right now on my phone, I can dial into the master dashboard. I can reset a repeater at the master. I can create. A good example is the ham fest that we had a few months ago, Great Town Ham Fest, over at Shrine Temple. I found out that North Kansas City was having an event. They were going to use the DMR repeater up at the airport. I went in on my phone and removed all the static talk groups, put everything to user activated or asleep so that they can run unimpeded on that repeater by themselves how they wanted. And we could do that on any of them. Yes, sir. Did you have a comment? Okay. But Brandmeister has given us full control again. You don't get that on a DMR market system. This is a typical brand or DMR mark type thing. You got repeaters linked into a C bridge, and they go to a master server. This is a rough estimate of a DMR mark. You've got a couple of full times worldwide North America. Then ta the TAC channels are BS channels. They, you make a general call for somebody, you move over to TAC channel to, to, to carry on your conversation. These are connecting channels, and these are BS channels, basically. And then regional, area zero, stuff like that. Now, this is basically, this is part of our actual network right now. We've got our mission repeater, which was our flagship repeater. We've got one in Peculiar, and we've got one up here near the airport. They're tied directly into Brandmeister, and then there's 40 Brandmeister net, uh, masters that are networked in constant, they're, they're meshed. So there's full redundancy on them. We very, very rarely lose a master. It has happened, but we very rarely have. Available talk groups on Brandmeister Repeater, like I said, over 900 available on both time slots. We just designate backyard repeater group to time slot two. 
So that gives you 899 to play with over on time slot one. If you can't get in, I don't want to hear it. That's all I just said. <laughs> so, and here are some of the talk groups. This is a very old, early list. And they're, you see the numbers to the left of the name. That's the phone number or the talk group number. I can, if I published the whole list, it would be probably six pages by now in this font. So, if you're traveling somewhere, we've run into this. Lee has gone to Wyoming. Ron and the guys went to Hamcation with a DMR repeater, and they've contacted back here, backyard repeater group, by, with a Brandmeister repeater. Now, when we go to Lincoln Saturday, we'll have a repeater. And we'll be on from Lincoln on Backyard Repeater Group from the hand mm -hmm. stuff in Lincoln. Once you're on a Brandmeister repeater, they're all interconnected. If you want to talk back to BYRG or Kansas City North Aries or any of the talk groups here in town that we've got set up, all you have to do is contact that local sysop, say, hey, I want to use this Brandmeister talk group. Which time slot would you prefer? 90% of them are going to tell you time slot one, but you need to verify that. Then you program your radio for that channel and you rock and roll with it. You, the whole time you're out there, you can just key up and talk back when, you, when that talk group time slot's available. Typical talk group, these are mapped across, these are the differences. You can tell instantly if you're looking, going somewhere, and you find a DMR repeater, you want to know whether I'm Brandmeister <laughs> or DMR, uh, uh, DMR Mark. DMR Mark on Worldwide North America have the lower numbers. Brandmeister starts in the 90s. And there are some bridge to cross. Now, I really ought to take this part out because we shut this down in Kansas City. Backyard Repeater Group does not allow activity on USA 3100 for two reasons. Number one, it's burned up two repeaters. It never shuts up. Literally never shuts up 24-7. Number two, I have listened on the web and I heard one guy say one day, well, I just found you on QRZ.com. You're about a half mile away from me. I'm getting my gun. I'm coming over to talk to you. Yes. 3100 has had every rule violation possible, and there's nothing that can be done about it. Nothing has been done about it. There have been physical threats. There have been people that have dead keyed a repeater and cussed for two hours with no timeout. So we've just decided we don't need it. We've shut it down. Okay. I think you guys have two up at St. Joe, right, Eric? St. Joe and Leavenworth. St. Joe and Leavenworth. Now, how many of you are familiar with the Central Region Intertice system repeaters that have been around analog length repeaters here in Kansas City? That many, huh? <laughs> Eric is one of the trustees, and they're starting to roll all live over to DMR, so that tells you how the explosion has gone. But we're putting linking in place to keep their backbone link intact for their systems. Uh, <clears throat> time slots allow for two simultaneous conversations. So you basically got two conversations with the same coverage. How many of us have done a public service event with two different repeaters? How many of them have noticed a difference in the coverage where one repeater will cover where the other one won't? Guess what? With DMR, you won't get that because your two conversations are on the same piece of hardware. If you get a boink, which is a low tone, that's a no no tone. Picture, price is right, wrong price given. The low buzzer that they give you, similar on DMR radio. That tells you you're not, number one, making a repeater or the time slot's busy. The time slot is busy, then you gotta wait. So that means that your S meter's gone, your light's growing green, but you're not hearing any traffic. That's when you spin through the knob. Or you get the any tone with two time slot monitoring, you hear everything that goes across anyway. In a monitor, in digital monitor mode on both time slots. If you want to use a certain talk group and both time slots are active, you gotta wait. That's all there is to it. Bridge talk groups on the backyard repeater group systems. All BYRG repeaters carry the following talk group as static or full time. Backyard repeater group, Kansas City Skywarn. That's a new talk group that I've created for the Kansas City Skywarn group. If it ever need it, it is there. Missouri Statewide Aries is now active. I've worked with Cliff, uh, Cecil, AC0HA, I believe this is called. 
uh, and we're, he wants to put DMR in the Missouri Statewide Areas Plan. <laughs> so I've created a statewide Aries, and we've got a couple regional that I started before then. We've got a Kansas City North Aries and a Cass County Aries. Is that where Peculiar is at? Yes. Okay. I'm a dot boy. I, once you give me north of the river, it's all creek anyway. So Peculiar is north of the river, right? Well, it is to me. <laughs> okay, all you UA or PTT talk groups are activated on your local repeater. They are on that repeater that's only on. Since we have a mesh network of repeaters, if you are user activated on time slot one on North Kansas City or NCI, and you go to our mission repeater, that talk group that you were on that you woke up on North MCI is not awake on mission. You have to wake it up on mission. It does not automatically follow you. It doesn't know where you are or who you are. It don't care. But you have to wake it up. Okay, which is no biggie. This is the dashboard, and guess what? I get to see all of you all the time. It tells me how long you talked, who you are, what you were on, what repeater you were on, what talk group you were on, if you were on the right time slot, what mode you were on, how strong you were into the repeater, and how long of a windbag you are. Okay. That is an old slide. That's from probably two years ago. Because Dennis had it in Keith up in Keith is up in uh, Omaha now. A couple of web pages to check out. First of all, byrg.net is our web page. I've got all kinds of links and all <coughs> kinds of information up there. Okay, if you can't find it, drop an email on a contact. I will answer any questions. Folks, Lee and I in the backyard repeater group have built our repeaters for four years easily plus. This has put the fun back into it for us. It was getting real stale. We're like, oh, oh, oh another repeater on another band. And uh, this has really started. And the reason why it's, it's grown and expanded, which has blown us away, and I'll show you how much it's grown in two and a half years, is because of you guys. We're not, my call's not on the repeaters. It won't be. We've got a club call. That's our glory now. That's, excuse me, that's our pat on the back. Knowing that you guys can use these and it's being used effectively. Okay, so now you're asking how much. A basic DMR HT can be bought between $75 and $200. Actually, we're going to narrow it down, folks. Don't do anything but the antitone. <laughs> I'm sorry. This thing, I've had them all from $1,500 Motorola's down to $80 Titeras. This thing beats them all. This is my daily carry. I've dropped it. I've splashed water on it. It doesn't swim. Okay. And like DMR, it does not lock on water. It's not the end all beat all. But the any tone is the way to go. And if you're really got an itching to buy one, I'm sure we can get you fixed up tonight for 180 bucks, 170 bucks. Okay. 99% of our users have just an HT. Am I right or wrong, Ron? Oh. Eric? How many mobile users do we have, Lee? Me. Probably one. Maybe 10 now. Maybe a couple dozen. Out of 300 yeah. users in the metro, in the, in the two state area. Everybody's running around with a handheld inside a rubber duck inside a car. The coverage is phenomenal. Yes. And that's what has blown us away. Our flagship repeater, the one in mission, is only running 55 watts. We couldn't put anything less than 100 watts on, on analog on UHF for years. I mean, it's just the coverage is just phenomenal. On a rubber duck, inside the car, and they get full metro coverage. 24. How can DMR play in a public service world? Well, two conversations is just like I said. You got a net. You got a general net on slot one, your emergency traffic, all of it's on slot two. The nice thing about having the DMR mark numbers, number one, you know who's talking. Number two, you can correlate it to a map. It is the perfect situation for a public service event. We can have wide area emergencies. 
We are in the process of building our own server network. If it goes down, two thirds, maybe 90% of our repeaters are all on the same ISP, right? Everything's set in mission. So if the net goes down, if the internet goes away, we are still linked through our ISP's backbone. And we're building a server in independence at the site to point all the repeaters to so that we maintain the linking and it will simulate DMR Mark and Brandmeister. But we will be in full control and we'll be able to segregate the repeaters in the metro area for that regional event. We can have North Kansas City, Independence, and Peculiar tied together and then have Kansas repeaters on a different network. But then we can also put a uniform talk group that will talk across all repeaters for interoperability. So that has that possibility that we are working on building out. The Metro mm -hmm. repeater group is doing that. We'll be one of the first ones in the country to do that. This is a good example. Um, Mission would become our master. We'd have the peers all talking to Mission and whatever else. As you can tell, this is an old slide because we've gone past the future. All those holes are filled in too with other repeaters. We've got one repeater at, at I-35 and 635, second in Peculiar. The third is up near the airport. We're looking for a site, and I think we may have pretty much come finalized our site down at Gardner. So we'll have UHF coverage of the metro area. Eric and his group out of St. Joe and the Kansas City DMR Club is filling in a lot of the holes. Got one going on at Excelsior Springs with K0BSJ. Um, the Nixon boys are going crazy down around Springfield and Branson and Rolla and Neosho. Um, you key up on 31201, you don't know who's going to answer you where. I mean, there's people all over from Pennsylvania, Florida, South Carolina, everybody's monitoring our talk group and talking to us. And it's like they're here in town. What started as one, that is the coverage of our 55 watt repeater in Michigan. Went to two, that's Mission and Peculiar. Those are our first two repeaters that we put on. And that expanded out to three, put the MCI repeater on up there. And as of present day, this is the backyard repeater group, just the local repeaters with 31201 active as full time. And this is across the state of Kansas and Missouri in two and a half years, folks. You key up on BYRG, you key up every one of them little red balloons across Kansas and Missouri. Now, the nice thing about it is Iowa is all on Brandmeister. We have had people in Iowa heading down towards the Ozarks using our systems coming down I-49 and I-29 without dropping a leg on the Iowa state line just by switching across our repeaters. Because I've explained to the guys in Iowa, you want to come use our repeaters, just use slot one, you can talk on your talk group. And they have very heavily used it. And it is the slickest thing. They can talk from Rolla or Branson all the way back up to Iowa for repeater to repeater to repeater, and it's growing every day. A lot of them holes are getting filled in. Is there an explosion? Hell yes, it's blowing us all away. We've been very blessed with our repeater sites. The coverage has been phenomenal. But we're not gonna let a, look at gift force in the mouth. We're gonna keep growing it as much as we can. Sir? Yes? And with that coverage, with your little HT for production, mm -hmm. you're telling me you can reach? Yep. Yep. Right now, this handheld right here has every one of those repeaters in a separate zone. Now, not only do you put a channel into a radio, you program these radios, you don't get to play with it until you put it in a zone. Okay? You put it in radio, but unless you put it in a zone, you'll never see it once it's off the computer. Okay? Any tone has got it to where you can actually dial them up to analog and digital. 
this is actually getting closer and closer to ham radio. Remember, these started in the commercial world. Okay? So in the commercial world, a user's handed a radio, and he doesn't get to play with it. He doesn't get a program and he don't get nothing. That's part of the rules. Us hands are finicky like that. We want a deal, right? That's all there is to it. Well, any time starting to listen to us. They're the absolute the only ones that are listening to us. And yes, there's been a lot of firmware revisions on the <coughs> tone. <laughs> but as a lot of us can tell you, it's to add perks. It's to add goodies. Okay, it's not to fix a lot of things. You know, some major minor things, or some minor things, not some major things, but it's to add a lot of goodies. But with this little radio right now, the way it's programmed, I can start in Springfield, Missouri, drive up I-20, I-49, all the way into Iowa, just by switching from repeater to repeater and continue on the same conversation on BYRG. Yes. And we're starting to move west. We've got, as you saw by the uh, map, we've got a group out in central Kansas, uh, NBAQ, the Kansas Link Boys that are on Fusion are starting to flip over to DMR. Everybody's coming to play in our sandbox. Don't ask, we didn't ask them. And I didn't ask all these guys to carry BYRG static, they just did. And we're grateful. It's expanded our capabilities and our utilized capable, possibility of utilization greatly. Okay? But we need to get this area filled in here, and we need to get this area filled in here. Well, when you were talking earlier about time slots, can you kind of read the mind a little bit? And, uh, Explain the part about uh, when you're assigned a time slot. You can only, if I got it right, you can only get on the air during that certain time talking to certain people. No, the time slot is not a time that you're allowed to talk. You can use it any time. The time slot is the moniker that they put on the window that the repeater sees, right. okay? So knowing that BYRG is static on our time slot too, and that's the only one we really like to have on there, so user two is gonna be on BYRG. As long as nobody's talking on there, and you don't hear anybody, that time slot is idle, okay? Everybody else gets to share time slot one, okay? Now, picture this. This is the only bad part about it. And it's caused me a few headaches, but everybody's starting to really grasp the concept. And that's one of the reasons why we killed 3100, is because people were just bringing up, if you bring up a talk group while you're driving around town, and I'm glad you brought this up because I've been meaning to mention this. If you want to just listen to a talk group, not talk on it, and you say, okay, I'm going to go over, knowing that like TAC 310 is on time slot one, I could chunk it on the repeater just to listen for that 10 minutes that it's up and not talk. You took that time slot away from me and Eric and everybody else. That's a no-no. You don't like that. That's not sharing. You're in my sandbox. You have to share. Okay? Or we call mommy and you go in time out. I can see it on your... Right. I can see it on dashboard. And I've actually, I've actually asked some people, don't, please, okay, especially with our public service stuff coming up, I have to give them time slot one, North Kansas City areas, that's a good example, Kansas City North areas is one. Now, if we have an actual emergency come down, guess who's really going to go to standby usage? Backyard repeater group, all right? I'm going to open up that time slot for our users for an emergency. That's all there is to it. This is an emergency-based network, first and foremost. It's a BS have fun network, second of all. And we're going to work out an implementation on that. So an emergency really does hit, like the tornado, and they need it. Guess what? UIRG may not be accessible on that repeater during the event. It'll be a vocal type shutdown because it's going to take too much to go into the server and physically shut it down. Now, if we go and we lose the internet and we're on our private server, 
yes, at that point in time, we will get with Carolyn and Matt May and Johnson County and Dennis Carpenter, and we'll devise a code plug, a zone in the code plug, that will be just for emergencies to only talk to our private server. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're actually going to be going to that level. Okay, we'll be getting closer and closer to the cops, the way the cops run things and stuff like that. This will give us that capability. Ham radio is not a dark ages anymore. Okay, does that explain a little bit? Any other questions while I'm catching my breath? Yes? Maybe. I know it's a simple question, I guess. Oh, no, trust me. Number one, two rules I forgot to mention. There are no simple questions and there are no stupid questions. The stupid question is the one that's not asked. Okay. Turn on my radio. I notice the green light's on. So I switch, trying to see who's on there. Sometimes I hear who's on, sometimes I don't. The light's still on. Uh, <coughs> I don't know. I, and so maybe you can tell me what you're working up to where, if we're going to use this in an emergency, <coughs> How we're going to be able to get along. Like, we have a net control now. The net control guy has control of the frequency. So of uh, the time slot. Well, okay. I'm not talking about on DMR, I'm talking about in Okay, I follow you. Uh, how are we going to be able to have control during emergencies and practice that so that we can actually make it function? That's where we're going to have to do self-policy. We're going to have to get the word out there. I think I've also already established in the Kansas City area that although DMR is fun, there are rules that have to be followed. Uh, people have seen my meltdown <laughs> over to 3100. Uh, it's frustrating because honestly, I've created a monster. Okay, I didn't ask for this, but who's up here giving this talk? Not Lee. Not Eric. I'm the one who gets the emails and the phone calls. So, yeah, I will come across it. If something needs to be done, I will come across it before I can get it done. So, it's for everybody in this room. So, we need to get it established in an event like the Kansas City North repeater, the MCI repeater. That is known Tuesday nights at 6 45 yeah. is the Kansas City North Aries net. Okay. That's it. That's our first little pebble in the stepping stones across the lake. Okay, so I, I do have a question. When we do that, Ned, there's sometimes I hear people, and there's sometimes you know, I can hear net control, and, and I can see the person's call sign coming up, and there's other times that I know that the net control has contacted somebody, but I, I don't hear them, and I don't see them. That's, oh, that's a handheld recovery, repeater coverage area. And Lee and I, have, I'm sending an email out to the guys. Unfortunately, that MCI repeater is acting like it's got a hiccup. We need to get to the site. I mean, I can reach mission easier. <laughs> Missions are godsend. Yeah. I'm not going to deny it. Mission, Fox Ridge has been a blessing in disguise. I mean, it covers. Yeah. And now we've got another monster. Huh? I can work it almost to camera. Now we've got another monster that just went on yesterday. Eric, you want to explain to the folks? Leavenworth? Yeah. My repeater, 442, 350 in Leavenworth, I converted over the weekend. It also carries the Northland Aries. Same schedule as the MCI repeater. And we've got some overlapping coverage. I don't know how much. And anybody along 45 Highway on the western part of Platte County, you'll have phenomenal quarter coverage. We're growing. Does it walk on water? No, no. It's got a 500 pound weight built on it. All right. Is it a pain? Yes. I used to be blonde two years ago. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, that'll change. Um, <coughs> we need to hear this stuff, so we need to get this ironed out. Uh, because I have other folks that are probably in the future still. And but then you're stuck with the one with the agent. Not the agent. You'll never hear me, and I should have said this early too, and everybody knows. You'll never hear me 
do a debate about fusion to be start the DMR. Yeah. That's like an argument about politics and religion. <laughs> do I argue or talk about politics or religion at work? No. I'm a recovering Catholic. I freely admit it. Okay? But I will not talk religion, I will not talk politics, and I sure in hell ain't going to talk the merits of D Star Fusion. They've all got their place. Okay? Um, well, having all this flexibility sounds real good. Like, so I think once the protocols are in place, uh, we're not stepping on each other's toes and we're Broad pains. Business. Trust me, 40 years ago when we were doing DMR analog, mm -hmm. we still had the same growing pains. How many of us remember the old 3191 auto patch and the, when it first started up and the headaches that was on it? You know, a lot of people didn't realize that everybody in town could hear that phone conversation. And some of the phone conversations did not, should not have been heard, okay? My wife didn't like to get phone calls over that. Well, we're at this point right now with DMR, so give us time, we're growing it. Um, Another filler that's going in is possibility of the Excelsior Springs machines going to be rolling over to DMR. And at Plattsburgh, it's got a two meter repeater that should be able to fill that. I don't know, how's the coverage on Plattsburgh? We've got to set some levels. It still drops, uh, it still won't be code audio here and there randomly. So you got to understand, it's backyard repeater road. group's been on a, a tap water budget. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the tap water that we're running off of is out of Okay, so I've had a lot of expendable income the last year and a half, so that would help grow the DMR network plus the drive. And for the first time in 40 years, we took donations and didn't know how to handle it, but we ended up buying a brand new repeater for mission. So it's a brand new Motorola. All right. Well, it's. For the first time in a long time, we're all actually built a repeater. Um, but uh, we're, we're stumbling right now. We've got a lot of good footing going, but every now and then we do stumble. So we've got a restricted schedule on getting up on the MCI site. Uh, it's got to be during the week. It's got to be 9 to 5. Okay? Uh, so it's not like we can walk up there like our mission site. I was up there yesterday and did a reset on a couple of things. Uh, I can't do that at MCI <coughs> and a couple of other sites. So mm -hmm. those sites, although they're excellent sites and we've got really good landlords, we've got to be restricted on how we get to them. So we've got to deal with them in a cautious manner. So we'll get to that when we can. Until then, we're watching the growth happen and are thankful for the guys like Eric and Travis mm -hmm. and Brian that are jumping on board, that are taking a lot of the pressure off me and Lee and Smoke to get this system filled in. So, what's our desired coverage area? Simple, real simple. We have the backyard, BYRG, yeah, real simple taste. The world. <laughs> That's our desired coverage area. If we don't hear the echo, you ain't into the repeater. And we're not responsible if your radio takes a swim. I'm sorry. That's all there is. All about the echo, folks. How does the BYRG cover so well? How does DMR work so great? That's simple, too. Fairy dust. So, <laughs> got any questions? Here's our web page. You need to hit contact us or DMR at BYRG.net. They both come to me. If you have a DMR radio, we have a godsend in Kansas City. It's called a Zen Zero GSG. <coughs> Tom has written the software that really makes it so simple. Um, when you're ready to program your radio, Tom's software is what you need. That's all there is to it. And I don't care which radio you have except for Motorola. And that's the only reason Tom does not touch Motorola is because of possibility of lawsuits. Mother Ann likes to sue people. That's all there is to it. Two rules. Keep it legal and have fun. Oh, and don't be on the wrong time slot. <laughs> <laughs>